and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening, and thank you for joining me on this, what is for me anyways, a cold, uh, rainy Wednesday evening. Uh, this painting is going to brighten everything up, I am sure. A couple of people already here. Sudike is here, Natalie, Liza, and I forget somebody else up here i think that's it we're talking a little bit in the uh, pre-stream chat uh always always like that uh, today we are gonna point uh, point we're gonna i'm gonna point to we're gonna paint this guy up here uh, a little poison dart frog i like these guys because uh they're such a nice pop of color and they're fearsome the these little guys they i think they know that uh, nobody's going to bother them, and they're strut around with such bright colors on. Anyway, they're fantastic. I really, uh, I really think they're pretty cool. So we're going to take a shot at doing this. The paper before we get started, the paper that I'm using is Fabriano Studio paper. Uh, a couple of different brushes. Uh, well, actually, I think I'll stick with my King Art brushes. Though I'm though I am thinking about buying some new brushes, but for now, my King Art brushes. And back to my normal palette here, which is all filled up with M. Graham paints. Dana is here. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so, as always, if there are any questions, please just shout them out, and I will try to answer them as best I can. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to jump right in. So, you can see this guy. He's got two basic colors on him, right? Uh, this this lighter blue and a darker blue, and I've kind of decided. Actually, I should say, don't look don't look at this <laughs> practice hat down below. Whoop! Uh, I was doing some testing of some colors, and I've got a few. Um, this is uh, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, phthalo blue, and turquoise, and just trying to see what the colors are that I want to put on this guy. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cobalt blue for that lighter blue area. And I'm going to go with my favorite here, uh, phthalo blue, for that darker blue area. And I think the two of those colors together will go real nicely. And if we need to uh, darken a little bit, well, we'll add maybe a little bit of neutral tint. Um, <clears throat> or maybe just a touch of orange, maybe. I don't know. That should... Uh, kick it off to uh, the complement color to that and so we'll just go with that and we're going to get started um uh, let's see <laughs> liza you were going to guess cyan and prussian blue oh i don't you know what uh i don't have prussian blue in this set i do i really do like prussian blue prussian blue is fantastic uh, but I, I think I only have Prussian blue in my Holbein paint set. And I was telling uh, Natalie and, and, and Sudike before we got going here that um, I've been doing some more plein air painting. And it just kind of moved my um, Holbein paints into my travel set. I've been using my whole bunch i'm sorry i've been using my mission gold paints in my travel set and i just kind of uh moved over my whole bind paints which i haven't used in a while but which i really like i think on my on my travel set i have a little i'm a, a little easier on myself with that and so <clears throat> i'm going to use those for a while and see how it goes um, I did, I did get out and do some plein air painting this past weekend. We had one day of sunshine here, <clears throat> and uh, I I took full advantage of that day and got out to do some painting. I'm gonna, you know, what, I'm just gonna paint right over this guy's whole arm like this. All right, <clears throat> just I'm just trying to be careful and paint right around his eye there a little bit. Grab a little bit more of this paint. And what I'm putting on is just a light first layer 
I'm expecting that this will be the highlight layer and it will put on some more color around this to um, fill in where there are some darker areas or some low lights and we'll leave this first uh, layer of paints here just for the highlights that um, that come in and Liza says you're getting a few whole binds by the end of the week which yes Sudika has the proper question <laughs> what colors are they what whole bind paints are you getting in I don't know if I told you guys or I <clears throat> I mentioned it a long time ago I actually used to scour um, eBay looking for paint deals and I know that the Holbein paints aren't exactly cheap and I kind of feel a little bad saying this but I I actually got my set of 24 for about 30 bucks it was super super cheap uh, they were used looked like very slightly used to me and I've had the the set for a long long time I'm gonna drop in just just a touch of darker color in here where I think he needs just a little bit of darker color Let's see maybe a little bit up here that little bit down here and this will all go together. Susie asks, has anybody found Prussian blue to be fugitive? Great question. I have not. But I don't use it enough to really say that. I got a peacock blue and a rose matter, which I'm this is the point of find is um PR, I'm assuming that says I've got a, something in front. PR 83, I discovered it after I placed my order. Um, that'd be like my third tube of PR 83. <laughs> it happens, you know, it happens. But not all, not all of the colors are exactly the same, even if they're the same pigment number. So don't let that discourage you too much. Um, I have. Uh, peacock blue. Peacock blue is actually lovely. It's a lovely color. Uh, I used it this past weekend in my paintings. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, Kimberly uh, claims it it disappears in sunlight. Prussian blue. I haven't noticed that. Maybe if it disappears in sunlight, they should name it like vampire blue or something like that, right? <laughs> it goes away. It runs away and hides in sunlight. It's the all new vampire blue. Just trying to get a little bit of this color on here. And I think I can go for a long time with the amount of color I have on my brush. A little bit more than I wanted. Ooh, I'm gonna turn this again. Let's see. Prussian blue is Prussian blue fugitive. Somebody ought to be able to search that, right, and find out. I can't say too much because about fugitive colors because uh, one of my favorite colors I have it in my palette here. Actually, I used to have it in my palette here. I've slightly changed it. Is uh, gamboge? I love gamboge. I have new gamboge in in my set now. But gamboge is a somewhat fugitive color, but it's such a nice color that I put up with it, and I think enough people complained about it at least in the m gram set that they've changed their formulation and it's no longer a 
It's no longer gamboge. It's new gamboge, and it's much less fugitive than it was. And does anybody know why they use the term fugitive? I don't. I want to know. I always thought it was a weird um, term to use. Uh, so I'm looking at this. Maybe my colors aren't quite as different as I had hoped they would be here, but we we will fix that. <laughs> Let's see. Um... Let's see, Sudeke, you made a color chart of all your colors, and you're hoping you don't have to duplicate some. Yeah, I'd, um, <laughs> Liza, you keep a color chart next to your computer, or you need to, so when you're ordering, you know what you already have. I like it. I like it. I like the thought, anyways. If it were me... I would keep that chart right next to my computer and then promptly ignore it and continue on <laughs> ordering whatever colors I wanted to. Actually, my big problem isn't um, isn't so much paint. I have plenty of paint, and I like the paint I have. Every now and again, I get a little hankering for some new paints, but my problem is brushes. I love brushes, and so I have, like, many. I have many brushes. Let's just let's just call it many. Uh, and there are a few more that I want to get that I just saw, and I'm forcing myself not to buy them. And I'm trying to see how long that will last. But I do like some nice brushes. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, as I scare myself into controlled spending by going into a local art supply store, nothing like seeing the price of things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Art supplies are quite, or have gotten anyways, quite expensive. Quite expensive. For sure. Let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And even though this is phthalo, I'm gonna see, and phthalo is a staining color. Well, why am I tempted by brushes? That's a great question. I think the answer is, um, I think the answer is because brushes give you a different experience um, when you use a different brush, right? Paints are paints and paints are cool, but the application of the paints is always the same if you always use the same brushes. And I don't mean to, that anything is wrong with that because, I mean, look at me. I've been using these these same brushes for about a year now so there's nothing wrong with that at all but when you get some new brushes and you put them on your table and you start using them then you're like "Ooh, that feels really cool is that how does that compare to my old brush and then you look at it and it, and it kind of reinvigorates the whole experience i think that's why i like uh different brushes so much let's see um, I make my swatch book like the other ones that Jerry sells. I keep pigment numbers for all the brands I have. I do too. Where's mine? Where's mine? Natalie. Ah, uh, yes. Here's mine for these paints that I have whoop, over there. For these ones. Doo -doo. And I have the color name and then the pigment number on all of them. And I put it over top. I paint over top of the words here so I can see kind of the opacity of them too lots of people have lines that go through this way i just painted right over the name and um, you can see like the maroon perylene fairly opaque there's some opacity to the azo orange but well, in the yellow ochre but other ones like the azo green here i don't know the cobalt's pretty uh, translucent or transparent the turquoise is certainly transparent 
Uh, ooh, my, the Cronacono rose very transparent. Anyway, it's nice to see. Is it the ca okay? Um, Natalie says, uh, "Is it the camera that makes the legs in the photo look almost purple?" Oh, over there. <clears throat> well, probably. I will say, <laughs> I'm cheating just a little bit. So, I the the picture that you're seeing over there. Uh, is a picture from the website PMP Art, and I fully intended to paint that frog. And then I found a different picture of a frog in the same pose, or almost the same pose, you can see it here, almost the same pose, uh, but with slightly different colors. And the frog that I have over there on my computer uh, has slightly different colors than that one. Now, your question still stands, are those legs purple-ish or are they blue-ish? And I'm looking at them uh, in a slightly larger image and there's just a touch of warmth to that blue that kind of does give them a purple-ish tint. Um, so, uh, Natalie, it could be, it could be that there is some purple to those. Let's see, uh, the brushes give you a new experience. Yes, so Susie, yes, so you must be more spontaneous than I, <laughs> like predictability. Oh, the, I'll show you this, look, let me move my frog out of the way. Here are just the brushes I have on my desk. <laughs> I've got... A uh, Sumi brush here. I've got some flats. I've got some quills. Uh, what, what's that? A fan brush. About five or six different kinds of rounds. I've got this one. This is the most expensive brush I own right here. This is the Winsor Newton Series 7 um, brush. And then over there. Shoop. <laughs> on my bookshelf, I've got 80 <laughs> other brushes. I don't know. I love brushes. I love them. Let's see. Um, Susie says, MP can make all things, maroon paraline can make all things dull. <clears throat> Didn't somebody say, Natalie... Oh, Natalie had a question. That was about... I thought I saw another question here. <laughs> Eliza, you said you have that brush holder. I got that one at the dollar store. <laughs> it was the right price. And it's the right size. And I got this on here. Does anybody have one of these? A palette knife if you need to do any scraping or line work on there. It works great for that. Uh, still a little bit damp. So what I'm going to do is I told Natalie once again I went out to do some plein air painting so while this is drying a little bit I went out and sat on the beach and painted this which I think actually turned out pretty lovely I mean I'll show you this over here in a minute but uh, so I walked out uh, on Sunday morning at about seven o'clock. The sun was just coming up and I got on the beach across the, the harbor. This, this little area here is called the pit. So I got across from the pit and sat down and painted our local landmark here. Had a great uh, time doing that. And then I was like, well, I'm not ready to go home yet. Um, so I turned around and it was this giant piece of driftwood. I won't even... Uh, that was on the beach, and so I painted this giant piece of driftwood. I'm not sure how well this one comes off, uh, but it's fun. It was fun. This one, I love the way this one turned out, though, and I can't wait to go out uh, next week and do a little bit more plein air painting. So there's 
that. <laughs> that Lisa is very nice. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Just not. I think it's not drying quite quickly enough because it's so damp here. I'm going to put you on mute for just a second so I don't blast anybody's ears out. And I'm going to make sure I dry this off. So give me one second. Are you still there? Am I back now? Am I here? <laughs> I think you can see me. Okay, I think I'm back now. I have to remember, uh, I have to remember I can't have my heater on and run my hair dryer at the same time or I blow a circuit. Um, and it was when I came out here to the studio, it was about 55 degrees, so I turned my electric heat on and forgot all about that so i'm totally sorry about that <clears throat> uh, let's see where was i at? oh i had just dried this off and we were about to get some um <clears throat> excuse me That's when I froze a week ago, too. That is when I froze a week ago. Huh. Now I need to recapture <laughs> where I was at again. All right. What I'm going to do is start to... We got this base color on here. I, I think the base color is great. I think what we're going to do is we're going to start to put on some... Uh, we're going to start darkening up the layers a little bit so we can see some definition start to develop in this guy. So I'm going to drop down a brush size... Uh, I'm going to bring up my reference photo again so I can see what I'm doing, actually. And let's see, this was cerulean blue. So I'm going to see if we can't darken this up ever so slightly with some cerulean blue. And I apologize, I apologize, I apologize for that happening. I kind of made a note of that the the last time it happened and i went okay i've got to remember not to do that and it looks like the first thing is that i forgot that that happens again so i don't like that uh, i don't think it's fair to you guys so i greatly apologize uh and i'm gonna make it up to you by painting a wonderful little frog here <laughs> and so let's see what let's see how we can finish this guy up i hope that he turns out just like we want let's see i've got some i've got some additional colors flowing over here and i'm gonna i'm gonna just gonna as i go i'm gonna make this wet a little bit uh, and I'm going to just move some of these colors around here and there. My table slants down towards me this way. So I can kind of be cognizant of that and <clears throat> use that to help this water work for me to move some paint around. I don't have to let it do all of the work, but I'll let it do some of the work for me and I don't know let's get let's get a little bit of color right over here on the back side of his 
his nose over there. I hope you guys can all see where I'm at. And this is still dry down here, so if I put my hand on it, I'm not getting into any paint. Uh, let's see. Before we get too far, I guess I should say that I have had, in addition to my family this week, it may not be the addition you are all thinking of at the moment, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but in addition, nonetheless, I have, I think everybody on here knows I have pet chickens and I love my chickens. Uh, so I, this week I got three new chickens and they are the cutest, most adorable little things I have ever seen. Three little chickens about six weeks old <laughs> and completely adorable. They make these little noises. Beep, 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 <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Uh, and they coo a little bit. They're just completely adorable. <clears throat> Liza asking about brush-o. Has anybody used brush-o? I've used brush-o. I think we've talked about brush-o on here. <clears throat> Liza, you didn't know I had chickens? Oh, I love my chickens. I've had chickens for... Well, I grew up having chickens in the yard, and I got chickens um, here at, at the house on, on the uh, chicken ranch. <laughs> Not really, but I would call it that. Uh, about six years ago, and uh, re fell in love with chickens, and <clears throat> have made a vow that uh, I will have chickens in my life. <laughs> for a long time to come. They're such quirky, fun creatures to have around. Uh, they're very, if nobody is, or if anybody out here hasn't had uh, chickens or been around chickens um, in their life, <clears throat> I, I uh, equate them to, you know, I have a small herd, school, <laughs> a flock. I have a small flock of them. Uh, previously, I had only four, and now I'm up to five. <clears throat> but they are, they're as much pets as, as they are uh, anything else. And um, uh, they're like having outdoor cats. This is what they are. When they want to be around you, they come around and they'll say hi to you and they'll let you know that they're there. <laughs> and they'll beg for, well, like I guess a dog would. I was going to say they'll beg for food. This is more of a dog thing, but um, they are super fun to have around. I go out in the morning and sit with them while I have my coffee on the days where it's warm enough. And uh, they'll hop up on my lap and just nestle in there and be there quite comfortably with me um because it's totally fun totally fun to have around plus they give me breakfast <laughs> <clears throat> yeah eliza says you can't beat real eggs fresh eggs oh they're so so good we had a a potluck lunch at my at my workplace and um, I was trying to figure out what to take to a potluck. My wife was like, you know what? I'll make deviled eggs for you to take. And I'm like, ah, deviled eggs. How 1953 is that? Um, and I got there and I had, I had two dozen deviled eggs. And there were eight people there, 
nine people, something like that, gone, all gone. <laughs> they all got eaten right away. And everybody said, okay, you now have to bring those every time because they are that good. And uh, real fresh eggs are exactly that good. I love real uh, fresh farm eggs. They look different. They taste different. They're fantastic. Lost a few people here in, um, I'm guessing because of my power outage. I'm looking up, I'm looking at my YouTube stream over here and it looks like it's not doing well. It, it, it keeps buffering. Am I broadcasting cleanly? Uh, on I, so I broadcast using OBS and and it looks like it's coming out well. It looks like it's broadcasting well, but when I look at my YouTube feed on the other side, it it is uh, it's just continually buffering. So I don't I don't know. Um, Eliza, you said does my wife use Hellman's mayonnaise? Uh, I'll tell you, uh, I don't, uh, well, I don't know what mayonnaise she uses, but the answer is no, because we don't have Hellman's mayonnaise out here. Uh, CDK, question, why did I start applying paint rather than wet the whole thing a second time? And the answer is simple. Um... Because in the past, uh, when I've used different paper or different paints, and I have tried to um, do re-wet the entire thing, it hasn't always gone well, and the paints have gotten wet in many instances, and they have, um, instead of just putting a, a, a wet glaze on the top and then being able to paint over top, the paint would start to lift and whatnot. And I just feel like I have a little bit more control over it if I, if I don't do it that way, if I purposely uh, just wet a smaller area. Um, that's the only reason. It's, it's completely, totally a personal preference. Uh, I've just... Because that has happened to me a number of times, I've gotten used to just wetting my paper on the first go around and not the entire time. Oh, the first go around. Why did I why did I just start painting and not wet the entire thing? Because I thought I'd work fast enough that I could keep a wet edge as I worked down the entire thing. Um Sometimes it just seems like I can work fast enough. I didn't think that this the, the area that was here, right? It's a pretty narrow area as I'm doing the frog body. And then as I'm doing a leg or a back leg, I thought I could keep a wet edge and just keep going on with the whole thing. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I knew where I was stopping, where the colors break. That's all. Uh, again, personal preference. Could have gone either way with it. Um, just so happened for no particular reason that um, um, <clears throat> that, it, that it that it happened that way. Um, if that makes any sense, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. I could have just as easily have wet the whole thing, the whole uh, page, and then started adding color on. I just thought I'd get a little bit more control doing it this way. If I were going to do a landscape painting or something larger where I didn't necessarily feel like I needed that amount of control, I would totally do it the other way and wet the entire thing or all but maybe a small bit of it. Let's see. Um, Tom is here. I don't know if I said hello to Tom. Let's see, Tom, your YouTube is sending you to other videos for some reason. A minute ago, it sent me to a commercial. I don't have any control over the commercialization on my stream. I, don't, I haven't met the requirements to monetize 
it's so that I make money off of it. If, if it sent you there, it's because YouTube wanted you to go there and they're making all the money off of it. Um, let's see. Anna, Anna Petty Artist is here. Hello, Anna. Welcome. If you have any questions, Anna, and you would like me to answer, um, please throw it out there. I love answering questions. I don't know if you're an artist here on YouTube. I think everybody here is pretty accepting. If you are, throw out your channel name. Maybe some people would want to go and check check it out. Um, if you're a... I don't know. I, I don't want to make assumptions about anything. Uh... But uh, but yeah, if 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 you have any questions of me or of my art, I'm totally happy to answer questions. Um, I like making this a a two way street. That's that's what the part of the real enjoyment that I get out of doing these live streams <clears throat> is that like it takes me out of <laughs> my little studio here in my garage and allows me to talk with. A number of people and make some good friends here so please make yourself at home ask some questions um, get to know some of the people here we're all pretty nice we like answering questions oh you were here last week okay sweet I'm sorry I was I'm sorry. now I feel even worse that I wasn't paying attention or don't remember um, well, if you were here last week, at least the power didn't go out last week. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, I actually, I, I'm, I'm going to come back. I'm going to let this dry. I know there's a little bit of a line here, but I like the way that this is starting to look, right? It's starting to look like there's some dimensionality on this front arm. Starting to look like there's some dimensionality on the body of the frog. Maybe I need to do a little bit more down here. Let's see what it looks like when I get this back uh, back leg in here uh, and let's see I've kind of started this so that the light is coming in generally in this direction so I can use that as a as a guide on what to to darken and what not to darken Um, let's see. What else can I talk about this week? I talked about my chickens. Love my chickens. I haven't named the new, I haven't named the little babies yet. Not still yet to come. Let's see what their personalities show. And what it kind of seems like to me. We'll see what we want to name them. Uh, let's see. I did tell... I told Natalie because she was here early. I started working on a new uh, easel for my plein air painting. And, and again, Natalie, it's your fault that I gotten back into plein air painting. So thank you for that. I'm thoroughly enjoying my plein air painting. Um, but I, I was out painting and I thought I had a, a bit of a, a need for something a little different or I probably didn't really have a need for anything different, but I wanted to do something a little different. So I started making, remaking my easel that I take out with me. And I should say I used to, I used to put everything I have in, a, in my backpack literally a backpack like you would take backpacking right uh, aluminum frame right where you would where you would normally tie on your sleeping bag I used to tie on a chair and my uh, telescoping uh, easel and whatnot and I would take all kinds of paints and paper and everything with me and I was like holy cow that is a lot of work and I've simplified things quite a bit and in simplifying things I think I ran into a, a need to do something slightly different so I've 
tried to reorganize a little bit. Ooh, I like the way that that leg looks. That's nice. Oh, well, okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Anna, hold on. All right, I gotta, I'm throwing a flag here. You gotta, you gotta let us, and you gotta let us try to answer. <laughs> why did the, why, why couldn't the hen find her eggs? She mislaid them. That's, uh, you gotta let us try. <laughs> That's cute. It's cute. I love trying to answer uh, riddles. What you heard there was I love trying <laughs> because my answers are typically terrible, right? I don't do a good job with it, but I love trying. So please, please, please continue with the jokes. Don't stop, but just give us a minute. Okay, um, I'm actually... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I like the way that these legs are kind of turning out here. Right? I know I need to make... Yeah, I'm just going to lighten this a little bit right there. I know I need to make this bit a little bit lighter and the back side a little bit darker. But I've started to get that here, and I've started to get that here. I think on the next layer here that's going to look really nice and it's starting to look like there is a nice difference between the two colors here so uh that's a ben uh, that's a bonus there oh this is looking very nice. Very. I like him. Okay. So I'm going to look at that back leg. It's fantastic. <laughs> Natalie, you remotely downsized yours to a fanny pack. <laughs> That's great. I can't do that. Why do chickens make good bankers? Because they're cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. I think that's the answer. I think, who said that? <laughs> who, who answered it? Liza, I think you got it right. I think you got it right. Because they're cheap, cheap, cheap. Oh, I got this leg back here, don't I? That leg should, this leg should be much darker, shouldn't it? Oh, no! They like to have a nest egg. Oh! Oh! We were not even close. <laughs> All right. Good, good. You, you got this. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> That's good. That's good. All right, this I just darkened this up a little bit. This back leg back here, with with uh, just a bit more uh, Payne's gray back there, and as it gets. Back to his, I guess that's his knee that goes backwards that way. I'm going to paint right there. There we go. Have a nest egg. I wouldn't have, got, I wouldn't have gotten that one. I'll admit, I wouldn't have gotten that one. <laughs> I think it goes better with the, <laughs> the being an accountant. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to come further up this front leg. Now, the, the image I'm working off of, right? And you can kind of, whoop, and you can kind of see it on that one. Right on the shoulder, there's a distinct line here. And I want to capture that 
just a little bit. But more than that, what I really want to do is I want to make sure that I set my color, uh, my my phthalo blue, the one on, the color on his arm here. I want to make sure I set that color uh, to know how dark that's going to be. Not that I can't make it darker, but so that. Uh, so that I know exactly how dark to make his underbelly underneath here, right? I don't want them to be the same uh, dark in there, so I need to do something a little bit different. I'm going to make this darker down here, too. Come on. There. Come on. There we go. Nice, nice and dark back here. That's kind of underneath, and it's kind of far behind. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Shoo. Let's give him a little. The more I do this, the more I talk to myself. Like, I, I feel like I'm Bob Ross sometimes talking to myself. I'm like, oh, we just got to. Just give him a little bit of whatever this. Oh, shoot. Let's do this. And that's. I just remember growing up listening to Bob talk to himself. And I know I turned the page a lot. I know I turned it a lot. But look, I'm just trying to reorient the way I look, the way I feel I can get that brush in there really well. And look, I think he's starting to, to really look good. Got some real depth here between uh, this arm and this arm. Look at that depth. It, this looks like it's way pushed back, right? Way back there. Um, you can almost see some muscles on here or, you know, underneath the skin there. And these back legs, this dark here, really makes uh, this, this light come up. Um, I think he's getting there. I think he's really getting there. <laughs> Liza, you don't turn your iPad anymore when I turn the page. I, you know, I'm going to turn it right back, right? It doesn't stay turned for too long, does it? I don't think it shouldn't. I'm going to add a little bit of this. Uh, <laughs> I, I told you this story when I first. I think I told you guys the story when I first started painting watercolors. On YouTube there was a woman who would make comments on all of my videos and I don't I don't even know if any of those videos are up anymore I don't know I couldn't tell you which videos they are I'm not even worried about it to tell you the truth but she used to come on and make comments on all my videos and she'd go how come you turn the page it makes it so hard to see and blah 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 and I was like oh I'm sorry I'm so sorry I'll try not to do it anymore, and the more I tried not to do it, I think the more I did it, and I just kind of came to the conclusion that that's just how I paint. It It's just a natural thing for me to do, and it's probably because I never went to art school. I just have a love for painting watercolors, and... When I was learning and teaching myself, that's kind of how I learned to do it. And I can't kind of get around it. <laughs> it just kind of happens. So I'm sorry, but please bear with me. I'll do everything I can to make it a good painting for you if you just let me turn it. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We got some nice color on this guy. Oh, you know what? I, I want to do, I, I noticed that he does have like a little ridge running down his back here. And I kind of want to put in just, if I put in that little line, it's not even very dark. That's going to help define that ridge there. Okay, good. <laughs> Liza, you turn your paper too, and it helps so much. It does help. It totally helps. Um, 
<laughs> Anna, you wipe away eraser shavings when you're using your iPad. That's funny. It, but turning your page does help. It just makes it, I don't know, there's something about it uh, that makes it so much nicer and so much easier to paint. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal, really. Okay, I like, I kind of like where the frog is at right now. Uh, the body of the frog, this this top half. Maybe I want to extend this out. This bit looks a little blobby. I like the underneath part here. I like this part back here. Sherry, you've been turning yours too? Perfect. My kind of people. <laughs> yeah, exactly, my kind of people. How can you paint and not turn your page a little bit? I will say that's the one thing <laughs> I have trouble with when I do my plein air painting is it forces me to it forces me to do everything on one plane and it's difficult. It's totally difficult. Okay, cool. So there's a little color on his back now, right? I'm I'm trying to imagine the my phone just came on. Trying to imagine the light coming in here and behind this eye a little bit. There's maybe a little bit of a dark spot back there. I think uh, when once we get some of these black spots on here, though, that these are really going to help to fill in quite a bit. Now, I'm trying to see what's dry and where I can go to. I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give some color to his eye. And I'm going to use some Payne's Gray to start. Not dark, not too dark. But I want to start building up some of that color. <laughs> you are just wondering how I coped doing plein air. I don't cope doing plein air. <laughs> I do. It's hard. It's hard. As I clip, I literally clip my my paper onto my board and so once it's there it's there and if you walk past you'll see me <laughs> you'll see me stretching around like this or I'll turn the whole thing sideways a little bit I struggle a little bit but that's okay I think the end product works out I could do that whole thing. I could do that this way too. I could, or I could not turn it now also. I don't have to turn the page. It just helps. Okay, we got an eyeball in there. Always you get an eye in there and it starts to help with seeing the character of the animal a little bit. Okay, we dry enough here, we're dry enough here. I'm gonna put a little bit extra color under here. Maybe I bring that up a little bit, right? This side, his flank right here looks a little light to me. I'm gonna give him a little extra color there. Let me get some of this cerulean. Am I using cerulean? Cerulean. I'm gonna get a nice big wash of this. How many people are here? 10 people, we got 10 people here, at least 10 people here. I don't know if we have 10 people talking. If you're, if you're here and you haven't said anything um, and you want to, you don't have to, but say hi. Uh, let me know where you're from. If you've been painting watercolors long, or if you're learning, or if you're you're just kind of checking out the channel, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, or seeing what, what kind of things I might do, um, I like talking to people. I like making this, you know, a collaborative experience on in in lots of cases. I just like talking while I'm doing some painting. So uh, feel free to say hello. We're all pretty friendly here
All right, that, that seems a little bit better to me. And then I'm going to, all right, just back behind his arm here, I'm going to darken that up, and I'll pull that down a little bit. I just think there needs to be a little bit more shadow, a little bit, not shadow, darting a shadow area per se. We're painting an area of lower light, not necessarily of a shadow. And now I'm going to, ooh, man, that's a lot of blue. Now I'm going to darken this leg just a little bit more to the point where we can just go back and we can start to we can start to add little bits here and there that are going to I froze all good now ah okay yeah to me I can't tell it it looks like my broadcast is going out fine but it may not necessarily be so uh, if if I if I freeze up a little bit I, I apologize for that it probably has to do with my with me <laughs> losing power because of my own fault um, and uh, my, my entire network out here, which isn't much, not fully resetting. So we'll, we'll deal with it a little bit. Trying to get just the right color of blue in here. As long as this is wet, I can continue to play with it. I just have to be careful once it really starts to dry. I'm trying to I'm trying to guess kind of what his haunches are going to look like back here. And I'm not really sure what frog haunches really look like. <laughs> Let's see. Anna, I'm checking out your channel tomorrow as oils are what I'm best at. Okay, cool. <clears throat> awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys are checking out Anna's channel. And I will be absolutely zero help with oils because I don't do oils. Some people would say I don't really do watercolors either. <laughs> uh, somebody said something. I'm going to let this, ooh, I'm going to let this do its thing over here. Ooh. See, when I just let the color do what the color wants to do, it always it always turns out. I like painting frogs, Sherry says. We have Pacific tree frogs and chorus frogs here. The chorus frogs wake you up mid-February and they've been singing all night here. I, we have frogs here this year. We don't always hear uh, tree frogs. We've had them the past couple of years because we've had wet winters, but, um, you know, I grew up in Ohio, and that's one thing I've always missed were the tree frog, the, the spring peepers. We call them spring peepers. Um, I used to love hearing the tree frogs all springtime long. So the fact that we have them here makes me so happy. I can hear some springtime frogs. All, all like you say all night long they are just gonna sit there and uh, sing away um, Liza Liza do you have a channel throw it out there okay okay all right I'm really digging the back half of this frog. I think this looks fantastic. I need to darken a little, a few things up here. I don't want to do too much because I'm afraid I'm going to lose some of the spontaneity of the colors here. But we do need a little bit more. Uh, 
and I don't know how long we've been going here. I think we've got maybe another 20 minutes or so on this before we're reasonably done with this guy, would be my guess. I don't even know what time it is. Here, where's my clock? Oh, we've been going for about an hour. Oh, we're good on time. Let's do that. I don't have one, but if I did, it would be called mistake after mistake after mistake and what not to do. Oh, Liza, it's totally fine. I work at a university, and one of the mottos for our students is is learn by doing. It's our, you know, one of our overarching mottos that our students are supposed to do all their work by. Uh, but what we basically called is learn by screwing up, <laughs> and that's fine. That's totally fine because you know what? There's a lot of learning in that. Okay. Cool. Um, I am, I am out of focus is what I am. Come on. Come back into focus. Focus, focus. There we go. I am, I'm really liking the arms and legs on this guy. I really am liking the arms and legs on this guy. I think they are looking fantastic I'm just gonna darken a little bit here and there and then we're gonna move on to some spots on him or her I don't know I don't know this is another one of these is this is a him frog or a her frog and I don't know that I can't imagine that Poison dart frogs have different colorations for for boys and girls frogs because the coloration is there not to get eaten. <laughs> I don't think it's there to attract a mate like in a peacock or something. But I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh, look at those feet. Look at those toes. Oh, he's looking. There's this some real. Oh, I love it. Some really good work here. <laughs> I'm surprised because it's me doing it. <laughs> uh oh, let's see. Um, Sadiq, if you had one, it would be called the Idiot Painter. Unlikely, unlikely, unlikely. Um. Let's see. Learn by screwing up his own my whole life. Welcome to the club. <laughs> All right, good. There's some uh, mutual subscription or subbing going on there. I, I like that. Um, I actually recorded an art journal video today. Natalie, all right. Uh, I have to edit it and voice over. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I voiceovers are the bane of my existence. I I would put up more videos if I didn't have to do a voiceover and all the editing. <laughs> it's just so much. Natalie, good luck. I do wish you luck. That's one of the things I don't uh, don't like to do. It's another reason why I live video is so much fun. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give a little bit more on his eyeball here. And then we're going to paint some. Then we're going to paint some of his spots. And let's, and we're going to see. I can't talk. I'm really concentrating. We're going to see. Uh, what his body looks like once we've painted all these spots. I'm going to just get this wet. Just come on. Just damp. I don't want the hard edge. I want that color to run a little bit. 
That'll work. I think that'll work. Uh, let's see. Okay, Anna, how long have you been painting? A long time? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, his eyes got some shape to it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I excel at live chit-chat. I just... I just keep talking about whatever comes into my head. Actually, I have I have two things I try to do. Well, and I'm going to get a drink of water here in a second. Is one, I, I try to keep the conversation moving along, whether there's a point to it or not, because I kind of don't like a whole lot of dead airtime. And two... I try to say as few ums and uhs as possible. Oh, I needed that. Because I've been in lots of meetings, and I've listened to lots of videos, and I've listened to lots of podcasts, where people start to talk, and then they go, uh, 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 and it quickly becomes painful to listen to and so I'm pretty aware of when that happens and try not to do it or at least not to do it too much uh, painting or struggling all my life uh, <clears throat> and I'm sure you're a wonderful artist I have no doubt you're probably uh, like the rest of us and just um, uh, talk about how it's not uh, you're not that good and you you struggle with this and you struggle with that and then we're all going to look at it and we're all going to go well, that's fantastic uh, because we all like to point to the tiny things that maybe don't go as well as we would like in some of our paintings rather than focus on the things that do go well and when we do focus on the things that go well then we can affect a lot of positive change um, and it's it's easy for other people to see some of the problem or I'm sorry some of the good things in your paintings that maybe it's a little harder for uh, us to see as individuals because we're too close to the situation. But I have no doubt if you're willing to fess up to being an artist and you're willing to have a channel on YouTube that you are a wonderful artist. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. You're... <laughs> Liza, your best paintings are when you are really stressed. And probably because you're forced to think about uh, something other than, or you're thinking about something other than painting, and you're just letting the painting come through, and you're not overthinking what you're doing, would be my guess. I hate uhs and ums, and Michael, you don't, I don't have that problem. I have that problem a little bit, but... I probably have it a little less than most people because I'm com I'm I'm so aware of it. In my job at work, I spend a lot of time talking. I'm not always sure people spend a lot of time listening to me, <laughs> which is something completely different. Uh, but I do, I spend a lot of time talking at work, and I'm very cognizant of the people that have to listen to me. And so if I, if I can make my speech a little easier to listen to, then I think that's so much the better. And regardless of what I have to say... People might be a little bit more willing to listen to me. Okay, look at his head. Ooh, <laughs> look, we put some spots on it. All of a sudden, he's jumping to life. Don't you think? Um, 
I, I love this. I, w I will be curious, or I will be curious, I will be honest with you that I was a bit uh, concerned about how this would look when, not when I started it, before I started it, as I was thinking about this painting as I was eating dinner tonight, getting ready to come out here. You know, most paintings I have a general idea of what I want to do in the painting, right? How I want to attack it. Most, not all, but most I do. And this one, I knew I wanted to paint the body a certain way. I knew the colors that I wanted to use for the body. Oh, I just messed that up. Oh, I wanted to have a perfectly round eardrum and then I went and I kind of goofed it up a little bit. Well, that's okay. Uh, let's see, Natalie says you love the spots, but now the eye needs to be darker. The eye does need to be, the eye needs to be way dark and I've got this black over here. I'm going to get to that. The eye needs at least uh, another layer on top of it. You're exactly right. It does. We're going to get to it. <laughs> I hope. I hope. No, we're going to get there. But the spots are making it pop off of here. And that's very exciting. Let's see, Liza. I'm going through paintings that I felt I wrecked. There's always at least one part that worked. Oh, you're going to cut them out and make a collage. Collages are cool. Collages are pretty cool, and they're a little underappreciated, I think. Right? People who do collages um, come up with some really interesting things, but it's not always appreciated as, as a form of artwork. I had a teacher who was big on collage. And he actually made us do some collages. And I was dubious to say the least. But when I was done and when everybody else in the class was done with theirs, it really turned out to be an interesting uh, art piece. For me, for the whole class, really, and I was completely shocked that it would ever turn out like that, but it did, and I was totally, totally happy that we did it. I have done, since then, I've done a couple of collage pieces um, to try to, you know, just kind of what you were doing. Uh, Liza is resurrecting some older pieces, but just but just to keep some stuff uh, going. I don't know. I just I, I'm probably uh, really bad with my art because once I'm done with it, <laughs> once I'm done with the artwork that I'm doing, like this guy, it'll either go in a stack or it'll go on the wall in my office and nobody will ever see it again <laughs> oh i love the spots on this guy i think they're looking great um oh shadika you actually asked me that will this go on the wall of fame in my office it might i had well let's see I had a, I'm sorry, I had an orange frog on my wall at one point in time, and the guy walked in, a co-worker, and I'm always, I try to be very generous with the, the artwork on, on my walls. I would rather somebody who's going to enjoy it have it and enjoy it rather than just sit 
uh, in my office where I'm going to be the only one to see it. So he came in and went, oh, that's cool. My wife loves frogs. So I was like, hey, take this. Take this frog with you. When you go, it's now yours. Give him a good home. Tell your wife, <laughs> you know, you got him from me and whatnot. Uh, he was totally happy about it, and his wife never saw it because it's now on the office, on his office wall. <laughs> it's, it's, it never made it home. Like, Jordan, really? Okay, wow, I love this spot. I love it. <laughs> I think he's looking good. Okay. Um, his eye. Natalie, now you're right. This frog is waking up your eyeballs. <laughs> Resurrection is the word. That's funny. <laughs> Whoa. I'm gonna lose my I'm gonna lose my brushes here. Alright, I'm mixing up my black here because as Natalie noticed, this needs to be a little darker. I'm gonna put a little sepia in here too. Sepia doesn't re-wet quite as quickly as the other colors do. Well, that sepia will make it, just give it some body to be a little darker. Okay, cool. i got this color now. And you know what's even going to make this even better? Is when we put a highlight on his eye here. His eye is really going to pop when we do that. Okay, I'm going to put on that color. And then I'm going to wet this and let it flow out. Come on, pull it out. Not very wet at all when I do this. I just want to pull it out so that the color can, that darkness can kind of make its way around here on its own, kind of gradually. And what I should do is turn it about like this. Because as I said before, my table is slanted and all of that color is going to come down this way. That's hilarious. He kept the frog. He did, <laughs> he did keep the frog. It's in his office. His wife never saw it. So <laughs> I was like, that's fine. I think it's fine. I'm happy. <clears throat> I'm happy for him to uh, have the frog, even if his wife maybe isn't quite going to be happy about it. Uh, so now we come to the part of this whole thing. Whoop, let me move him up so you can see him. Oh, look, he almost matches there. Let's see, right about there. Uh, I have drawn on some... Uh, and you can see down here and a little bit over here. I've drawn on some grass or some moss around him. Ha! Ah, that he's sitting on. You all know this is my least favorite part. <laughs> I like to... I like if I'm painting a subject, I want that subject to be the main topic. I don't want there to be any confusion about it. So I'm just as happy to leave... Uh, the frog be the frog. But in this case, um, we probably do need to let this frog sit on something. And yes, I have a bunch of green on the side of my case here. When I closed it last time, my cobalt green did leak again. And it got all over the place. So... I have cobalt green all over. As as Kermit said, it's not easy being green, right? So I'm going to paint on some very light green color around this guy, and then we'll give him a little bit of texture. We'll give that green a little bit of texture and... We'll just see how it goes. I this is this for this part of it. I don't really have a specific plan. I will tell you. I will be honest with you about that. This 
this is the part of painting that I really like the least because I feel I'm the least good at doing this if 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 my English is right I went to the Zoolander school for people who don't speak good so I'm not sure I said that properly Kermit's got the blues let's see if I can just barely get in there there we go this is this would be one blue Kermit for sure blue Kermit If, if this were Blue Kermit, would his favorite song be, I don't know, Blue Suede Shoes? <laughs> My steady hand is mesmerizing you. My steady hand. Uh-oh, how did I get red on there? I, I, I don't know. Liza, I think your iPad is moving at the same rate that my hand is. <laughs> I don't know that I have a steady hand. Actually, when I stop and I think about it, I can do okay. I wouldn't say I'm the steadiest of hands, but I can usually do okay. I'm gonna, let's see. Let's get some of this azo orange in here as we come down a little bit. I don't want this green to be all the same color. It can be slightly different in here maybe some gamboge i'm okay if as this color comes down it gets a little brighter it gets a little more saturated a little fuller or richer uh, because it is getting a little closer to us but i'm I, I do want to be cognizant that that I leave enough uh, lightness around this guy. I don't let this get dark enough to start competing with the f with this frog. And I'm going to try to take out some of that white. I've got a couple of little white areas that I don't necessarily want. I'm just going to grab those and get those out of there. That's good. And I think the further up this painting I go, the lighter this has to be. So... So uh, I think I'm able, underneath the frog here, I think I'm good with a few darks because that's kind of going to be a shadowy area anyways. But I think this whole area here needs to be really light. And I'm only going to take it up to, I guess, maybe like his shoulder height. Very light up here. And on this other side, light, light, light. Being careful around this guy. Plenty of color on that brush. Very light up there. All right, he's sitting on something. Whoops, 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 there he is. Okay, let's see. 
<laughs> Believe, believe uh, let's see. Your brush point is always on point. Is it? <laughs> I don't know if that's really true. My brush point is rarely on point, I think, is the way it should be. Uh, but I'll take the compliment. Thank you. I try, I try, I try. Sometimes things work. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So I need to, yeah, I see in the center, there we go. I need to figure out in here what gets a little, what gets texture and what gets shadow, right? I need to figure that out. I think that's an important thing. Right, I've got some olive gray here and some cobalt green that I'm going to mix together. And I've got some areas here that I know I want to get some some texture. Right? There's a little tuft of something here that he's sitting on. Cool. I don't know if I can do this with this tiny of a brush. But there it is. Okay, cool. Instant, instant little puff of... Oh, man, I don't even know if you can see it. Instant little puff of grass right there sticking up. I'm going to do the same thing in front of... This foot here also, right? You should be able to see some of this right over that blue. And if you can't, I'm okay with some of that. A little color underneath. Let's pull and blend it down ever so slightly. All of a sudden, Tuft of grass. Cool. Easy as that. And it looks like now he's got, like he's sitting on something there. And I'm going to try the same thing with a little bit of this ultramarine and some of this greenish color. And I'm going to come in here. Here, this is going to be shadowy color. That's the hope. Just it's just got to be a little bit darker. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be too much. Let's get right up to there. Maybe we can add a little bit more here and arm there. Let's connect these. I want to leave that space where there's light coming in from the other side over there. I want to leave a little space here. Love the tuft. I don't know where I learned that tuft, but it works. Just drop a little bit of color in there, and all of a sudden, bada boom, bada bing, tuft of grass. Little tiny tuft of grass. Shadow over there. I'm going to put just a bit of shadow over here. He's sitting down in this little bit of grass. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, I think we got it. Oh, you can kind of see a little shadow line there. I don't think that's too bad. 
think though, where is watch watch this? Oh, uh, this is my white gouache. And we need to oh there's a something in it. A hair. Okay, cool. We need to give a little highlight there. You know what? I'm going to give a give a little highlight there. These guys have a little bit of glistening skin. A highlight, highlight on his toe out here. Give me a little bit more on a toe, on a toe, a little bit coming down his arm. Just in a couple of places. Shoo, you know what? He's got something here on his nose. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, actually. On his foot, on a foot here. What do you think? Oh, you can't even see this one on his arm. Too small. Be bold. Be brave. Let's give him some nice big highlights here and there. Ooh. Let's see. <laughs> Bam. Oh, I dot. Oh, I dot. He did need, he definitely needed something in his eye. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that there. That was okay. Oh, all right, all right. So, what do we all think? I think he turned out pretty killer. I really like him. I'm gonna sign him. If I can find a spot that's not wet, I'll sign down here. There we go. And oh, I'm looking at him up on the screen. He looks fantastic. Um, so, gonna do a little bit of uh, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, uh, let's see where it, let's see where it takes us. I've got I got I got the pencil I drew this with. <laughs> I love drawing with carpenter's pencils. I think it has something to do. The flatness isn't like this, and so it disconnects your hand from your mind a little bit. You're you're not thinking of the. I don't know. There's there's something to think about here because you're not. It doesn't feel like a normal pencil, and so you you think about it differently in your brain. I don't know, but I really like drawing with carpenter's pencils. Okay, some of the things I really like. I I. I love his arm up here. I love his little elbow. And I like uh, his, I like this whole uh, hand and arm here. I like his haunches back here. This nice and dark, that back leg. This nice and dark. The thigh and the calf have distinct areas. You can, they have good shading on both. And you can tell each of them apart. Um, I like the grass in front of here. I like the grass in front of here. And um, I was a little unsure when I put this dark under here if that was going to play well or if it was not. I think that works really well. I left this part here uh, pretty light. I didn't go back and do anything on this white-ish area. After that first uh, layer, that first wash layer. And I think it works because it allowed me to put some darker here and here to give him some dimensionality. All of a sudden, this dark and this dark uh, and this light lead into this dark. And 
and he's got a curve on his body now. It, it looks like he's three-dimensional. And then I love the spots. Uh, I, I will be honest. I, like I said, I wasn't exactly sure how the spots were going to play out on here. But they do help to bring it to life quite a bit. I like his eye. I, I do wish his eye was more than just black. Um, but I like his eye. Uh, the animals, I think once you, once you put an eye on them, they really start to get uh, some interest to them. Um, I don't know. There's not a whole lot I don't like about this. I think if I were to do it over again, I'd probably do it. Well, I'd do it. I'd probably do it mostly the same. Um, I don't know. I, I, pr I might put darker spots on him, right? These are light, and I think it works, but I might put darker spots, dark, light, you know, like dark like his eye. But that's all. Uh, all in all, I think he turned out really well. Uh, I love these guys. And this is probably a hundred times larger than you're ever going to see them. They're all, <laughs> they're literally like a half inch long, these little, little guys. So, uh, so that's him. Um, I think he's great. <laughs> I think he's cute. He's so cute. So I want to thank everybody. Uh, who's here? Tom, Sherry, Liza. Anna, Dana, Natalie, Sudike, I don't know who else, so, did anybody else do any talking in here, is that it? Is that all I can verify in here? I don't know, if, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, thank you for joining me, uh, I'm making my Wednesday uh, quite enjoyable, I always look forward to these Wednesday evening watercolor streams, it's a great way to end my day. So I thank you all for that. If you want to link, look at the link down below. Um, the watercolor challenge for March on my Discord channel is flamingo. That's going to be fun to do. I'll do. I'll paint my flamingo the last Wednesday of the, this month. And other than that, I hope everybody has a great week. I hope you get to do some watercolor painting. And if you do, uh, come back next week and tell us about it or post it in Discord. And that's that. Until next week, thank you all so much. I had a great time here with you. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.